Okay, yeah, so before we touch number six, we should really talk about center of gravity real quick. And I, center of gravity is sometimes called center of mass, and I often abbreviate it as center of mass, but it's center of gravity. So same thing here. So, but center of gravity is, is if you apply a force to an object, it's at the exact, exact kind of geometrical center of where the mass is concentrated. So and if, that, if you apply a force to that point, it will not rotate. So if you look, I think my center of mass is somewhere right about here. Really? I'm asking this question. You think my center of mass is right about my knees? No, no yeah. right about here? No. You don't think I have that big of a head? <laughs> so, no. no, do you think my center of mass is right about here? Right. So more and more, it's been getting closer and closer to here somewhere all the time. So I concentrate more and more mass right here. Yeah. So, but if, you know, let's say I got hit playing football mm -hmm. and somebody hit me in the knees, would I rotate? No. Mm. Wait. If they hit me down low, head on, yes. in the knees, I would rotate forward oh, and fly forward. Right. Now, if they hit me high, you I'd rotate back. Ahead. But if they hit me right here, I might be pushed straight back without That's rotating. Right. Yeah. So if you hit an object in the center of mass, so it probably isn't going to rotate then if you hit it exactly in the center of mass. So there's a formula for center of mass, and it turns out you can get center of mass in an x direction and in the y direction, and then you can combine the two and get it in an overall center of mass and stuff like this. So, but if you look at it in just one coordinate here, you take the mass, so if you have a bunch of different point masses or something like that, you take the mass times its location plus another mass times its location and add them all together and then divide by the total mass. Why are there a different mass? So maybe you've got a complex system. Maybe it's not just a person, so, but maybe, um, let's say it's a person holding a box over here and holding another okay. box over here. And if I want to get the entire system, what's the overall center of mass, things of this sort, so, and again, a lot of objects are obviously really irregularly shaped and stuff like that, and it's not always easy. So, but lots of standard physics problems we can deal with. In fact, we could have dealt with it in problem number five over here. We could have said, what's the center of mass of this whole thing if we knew the mass of the seesaw? But we don't, so we couldn't really apply it in that sense. Okay. Um, and the x is just? So in the x direction. So if I said, where's the center of mass in the x direction? I could also do another one, where's the center of mass of the system in the y direction? Okay. And then I could get the overall center of mass by combining the two if I wanted to. So, but we're going to deal with it in a single dimension here for now. Okay, so while you're saying m1 times x1. So I'll take, if there's a bunch of different masses combined yeah. in the system, I'll take one of the masses, and then I'll take its position in the x direction. Okay. And I'll add them all together, and then divide by the total mass of every okay. object in the system. And now we're only concerned about x direction because we don't go back. Exactly. The other side of having a center of gravity here, a center of mass, is that if I have like a big long board or something like that, and it's resting on say a fulcrum right here, I could pretend so that the entire mass of this seesaw is all concentrated at its exact center, assuming its linear density is constant all the way throughout. And so we can say it acts at its center of gravity. And so it's got an application there as well. And we'll see that we need that here for problem number six. So problem number six, we've got a 10 kilogram board here. And we've got three different masses hung from this board. A five kilogram mass at position zero, a 10 kilogram mass at position two, a 25 kilogram mass at position six. And the question is, where would I place a rope to hang this board by so that it's in rotational equilibrium? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think the center of mass is like maybe right there? Where, where would you say it is? Cool, right around four. So let's say we hung a rope right there. The idea is that I'm gonna hang a rope somewhere right in here and hope that when I hang it, this thing's not rotating at all. It reaches rotational equilibrium completely. No, wait, no not four. Not four. One is 25, one is 15. So he's 25, five. he's five, he's 10, he's 10. So I got multiple masses here. Yeah, so let me ask you a question. If you look, we got a factor in the board as well. Where can I say the 10 kilograms of that board is concentrated? Right at three, at its center, yeah. So combining all these masses, now looking at them, I still, it's probably, it's gonna be somewhere over here. So you say 4.5, okay, we'll just pretend that you're right. If we hung it by a rope right there, maybe it's not gonna reach, rotate at all, reach rotational equilibrium. Notice, ultimately, relative to what we just had a conversation with, where do I wanna hang this thing? Since it won't rotate, yeah, where do I wanna apply a force, an upward force, tension of the rope, so that it doesn't rotate? The center of gravity, yeah. If I, apply, if I hang it anywhere other than the center of gravity, it's gonna rotate. So I can look at this as a torque problem and say the sum of the torques equals zero. I could also just look at it as a center of gravity problem and calculate it with the center of gravity. We're gonna do both. Okay. So in this case, we'll start with condition of equilibrium number one. Sum of the torques equals zero. 
Cool, and assuming we've kind of eyeballed where axis of rotation is, we can go there. But technically, I could choose any arbitrary axis of rotation, and the problem still works out. So if I want to say it's going to rotate right here, well, I mean, obviously, I'd never tie a string there and hang it or anything. But if I just want to make an imaginary axis of rotation, it's in equilibrium, the sum of the torque should still add up to zero. So, but in this case, um, I don't know exactly where that position is. And so I won't be able to calculate lever arms for any of these. So we're just going to pick. Okay. Where do you want to pick an axis of rotation? Four. Do you want to pick it at four? So, so I think it's going to be easier if we pick it right on one of the masses, because then that'll, that mass would have an, a lever arm distance of zero. So let's just put, it's going to rotate right there. Cool. So if I look here, sweet. So this lovely mass, is it going to cause it to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. That's a trick question. It's this, not because we it, already assumed. Right. He's got a lever arm distance of zero, so he's not going to cause any rotation at all. But this guy, clockwise or counterclockwise? It's Counterclockwise. So how about clockwise? How about clockwise? He's pulling down right, yeah, clockwise. Yeah, I, I, cool. What about this? What about the center of mass of the board? Clockwise. Clockwise. Well, everything can't be clockwise if it's going to be in equilibrium. So what's the one force on here that's not really labeled that's going to be counterclockwise? The tension and the rope we hang. Cool. But everybody else, you're right, is clockwise. And so I'm going to put them all on the right side of the equation, and I'll put our tension force. Hmm. Yeah, let's go just call it a tension here. Tension force and put it at some random distance here that I don't know, so R. Cool, and that's the only one on the counterclockwise side. On the other side, I've got how many different torque components? One, two, three. So give me, what's the formula for his torque? Uh, 10 times 9 times 8 times 2. Cool. So 10G times 2? Oh, 10G. Yeah. I thought it was like cool. 2 grams. No worries. Oh, yeah, sorry. 10 times gravity times 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, so. 10, Same. Cool. 10G, but times 3. three. And then this guy? Cool. So in this case, how many variables do I have in this equation? Two. Wait. Yeah. I have two. Can I solve for anything? It is two. Can I solve for either one? Ooh, then I'm not done. I need another equation. What's my other condition for equilibrium? Yeah, some of the forces adds up to zero, again, if we're in equilibrium. So in this case, I'm going to do this in the y direction. So in this case, how many forces point down? Four, great. So and in this case, if I look at this, he's the only one countering them. And so that tension minus, and technically these all are masses that point down. I can just do a bunch of mg's, or I could just summarize them and say 25, 35, 45, 50 kilograms times g equals zero. Does that help me? Yeah, what is my tension in the string? Cool, and I'm going to substitute that right back in here. Cool, can you get me a value for R? <laughs> no worries. It's right at four. So you're actually right on your first guess. My first try, yeah. So it will be position four. Yeah, right at position four is where we want to hang this thing. So if you notice one other thing we could have done here, we could have, instead of 490 Newtons, we could have left it as 50 kilograms times G. So, and then realized that every term had a G, and we got to get rid of all the Gs if we want to see them simplified it that way. Great. 
All right, this was probably the harder way to approach this problem. What would have been the easier way? Simply do our center of gravity calculation. Let's do that center of gravity calculation instead here. And notice I just want the center of gravity in the x direction. Cool. So let's even give ourselves a little more room. So what's mass one? Let's just do them left to right. What's mass number one? What's its position? Great. So. divided by the total mass of 50 kilograms. Sweet. So obviously that term went away. 10 times 2 is 20, 30, 150 is 200, 250 is indeed 4. 